My two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis. Tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis, yeah. Yeah. Don't cry, dry your eye. Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood. Welcome to another episode of my two Satoshis. It is October 19th, 2020. Shout out to CJK in the Discord room for the song request. This is a classic right here. Dougie Fresh and Slick Rig. Lottie Dottie. This is classic right here, guys. Thanks for the song request, CJK. I think I actually know who that is on YouTube, but I won't point him out or point her out. I'll just let it be. But welcome, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. Today, we are going to be looking at something. And I got to give my man Trek out there on Twitter the shout out for this one. He gave me this heads up over the weekend and he said how many people even have this on their radar and he's talking about the imf and a new article uh they put out talking about a new brenton woods agreement we're gonna go through that i'll give you some of my two satoshis on what that means for bitcoin if anything i'll let you guys know but we'll talk about that today and shout out to trek for that one because i think this is ultimately going to impact us one way or the other so it might as well be something that you're abreast of and can take advantage of possibly and then we're also going to take a look at and i i've been saying this guys so many times i hear on the internet on youtube on twitter no one can stop bitcoin no one can stop any of these cryptocurrencies they're decentralized they're this and this and then that well let me just explain something they can impact it very heavily not saying they can get rid of it but they can impact it so badly that it will impact the price to the point where it's going to just knock out a lot of people a lot of people are going to just give up capitulate and leave the diehards like myself i ain't going nowhere but i just want you to understand if you're not one of those strong hodlers or long term on cryptos then you need to take a shorter term perspective when dealing with these types of cryptos because at any point we can have these types of uh, moves so fencing finds bitcoin mixer operator 60 million dollars wow we'll talk about this and i'll give you my two satoshis on is this a watershed moment i think so <laughs> i think so and i'll explain to you why and lastly we're going to talk about this correlation with the s p and bitcoin and i've been saying this for the longest i hate to say it and i had a great conversation about a month and a half or two ago with my man Matty Greenspan. He was on one of my off the chain live episodes and we talked about correlation. He brought up some very neat charts that talked about it. I was in the camp of people who felt like the correlation was heavy, very heavy with Bitcoin and the equities game. So in particular, we're gonna look at this article out of AMB Crypto that talks about the correlation with the S&P 500 and bitcoin you're going to be shocked use this strategy literally it's working I'm not saying it's going to work forever but it has been literally working for the last 12 months or maybe even longer this strategy i'm going to show you will give you a surefire way to dollar cost average into bitcoin uh on down days and uh take profits on up days and you'll know that bitcoin is going to have an up day or down day based on this news here i'm going to show you so we're going to take a look at all the articles i mentioned today in this episode of my two satoshis let's get it before we start if you guys find these types of videos informative make sure you like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this and let's run down the heat map today we've got bitcoin up 3.8 percent trading at eleven thousand six hundred and fifteen bucks ethereum up 1.1 percent almost 1.2 percent trading at 379 bucks xrp is up we got litecoin up slightly today litecoin is trading at 48 dollars and 13 cents eos trading at two dollars and 58 cents and look at xlm that is up 7.8 percent today i'm not sure why guys let me know in the comments below if you know what's going on with xlm that's stellar and link is up 1.3 percent that's the DeFi world and i've seen a big pullback in the DeFi tokens over the weekend not sure why but i think it's going to catch up with the uh, new move up in bitcoin this week so we'll have to see but that's just my take on it and we take a look at what bitcoin is doing it took out that last area that i talked about we needed to 
you know, move above to see more bullish potential uh, in price action. And we did that. Did get a little slight slam down, but not much. This is on a one hour. I think we're getting ready to really test that 11,920 area on Coinbase. That's good news. We're continuing the pattern. I told you guys that we needed to stay above 11,188. And guess what we did? Anything below that, I was ready to go back to cash, but I didn't have to because we didn't breach it. So I'm still in 40% of my cash. And once we breach this 11,900, I could start putting the rest of the cash to work. However, I will say you technically could go ahead and start loading in the rest of your money. If you're on the sidelines with me, you could have done it or do it right now since we breached this area right here. Okay, that was a bullish signal for me. And now the full confirmation on this move up would just be a breach above 11,900. But uh, really, you could go ahead and start that positioning in right now. I want to draw a trend line for you to sh show you from a trend perspective where we are with things. This line, I changed the color to green so you can differentiate it between the other trend lines I have drawn. But this line right here, uh, I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit just like that. That line is the new area to look out for. So if you're kind of skeptical and don't want to buy kind of on the green day, you could possibly wait. I wouldn't though because again, this area was the technical break breakout that gave us that new point scored for Bitcoin and the bulls. But use this as a reference now for any pullbacks possibly done at this level right it could be done like this however i don't think it's going to happen i don't think we're going all the way back down to this level at this point we may hit this trend line later on uh, in the future here maybe you know if i extend this outward here on like november 5th or 4th or somewhere around there i don't think we're going to hit it anytime soon but you can use that as a reference now and i'll save this i have this chart pinned in the trade or die room on the discord server so check it out that's where i'm looking i think we're going to go ahead and breach and head higher and take out the 12,500 area that is the next real major target for us for sure so bitcoin looking bullish yet again and that segues me into this whole bitcoin and equities and more specifically s p correlation what does that mean for us and i can almost guarantee you over the last couple of days that bitcoin is tracking nicely with the s p 500 now today that is not the case s p was down 1.6 percent however if i click on the s p and look at its overall trend from maybe like last week you're gonna see a move up in the s p <laughs> and that's exactly what we've been having in bitcoin as well why do i say this i i say this to say you can track and get a gauge for the sentiment for bitcoin by looking at the s p 500 i know I, I hate doing it i cringe every time i have to do that but that is a great temperature check on bitcoin in the short run like month to month to see where the direction of bitcoin may be heading i personally think the S&P is going to head higher if things don't get too wild with the elections. With all this money printing, they're going to continue. The Fed and the Treasury are going to continue to buy equities and bonds, corporate bonds, through their special vehicles. That's going to continue. There's no reason for that not to. So I'm banking on equities heading higher. I'm banking on bond yields heading lower, i.e. bond prices heading higher as well. I know we live in a bizarre upside down world thanks to the Fed, but that is in my opinion, the way we're going. But I also think that Bitcoin will head higher even better and outperform both of those percentage-wise. So that's why I'm banking on Bitcoin. Uh, unfortunately, that is the case. But we have to look at the implications of a highly correlated Bitcoin to the S&P 500. And here's what you need to know. This article was great. And I especially like these line charts that shows us the correlation with Bitcoin and the S&P 500. Look at the numbers. Don't go off of your feelings, ladies and gentlemen. This right here says it all. To the right, as you guys can see, I'm going to zoom in for you. But the Bitcoin and S&P realized correlation, it is pretty much spot on. The only time it dipped below was in November, or I should say December of 19. We saw Bitcoin dip below and hit almost to 50% negative correlation. So that means it deviated in a negative manner from the S&P 
just a little bit on the month to month correlation. That's the dark blue one. The light blue one is the year correlation and that shows us it's at nearly zero and it dips a little bit in March and pops back up in, I would say June of 2020. It pops back up to a positive correlation and guess where the trend is going? The year trend is heading higher toward almost 50%. So what that means is that no, every day Bitcoin's price won't match the S&P. If it did, it would be all the way at 100%. If it was a 100% correlation, you would see Bitcoin literally go up when the S&P heads up and go down when the S&P goes down. We're hovering right around 50% correlation, which is pretty good positive correlation with uh, an asset. 50% of the time, the asset is going to be correlated with uh, another asset. I mean, that just tells it all to me. So this is a method that you can utilize to track whether you should be getting into Bitcoin or, or you should be scaling out. If we have a situation where the elections go haywire and you see a lot of volatility in the stock market, which you may see that, I really think you may see that. And volatility to the downside, I'm saying the VIX heading higher, the volatility index that is tracking, I think options, right? Calls and puts or whatnot in the equities market. If that heads higher, that typically means that the price of stocks are going to head lower indices are going to head lower you know you got money in there that you're kind of actively managing i would go to the sidelines before the election buy the rumor sell the news sell the election i would literally go to cash right at the election just to be safe if you're an active investor in bitcoin that's what i would do because the correlation is there i believe that we are going to see s p head a little bit lower and be volatile during this election period as the ballots come in the county and then you got all the uh, suing party left suing the right and fraud this fraud that and all of that i think you're going to see some turmoil in the equities market so to me that is the way to play bitcoin heading into the elections simply because of the correlation you see with the s p 500. here's another interesting one we've got bitcoin and gold realized correlations from month to month it is wild it is very sporadic and all over the place but if you look at the yearly smoothed out correlation it is near zero so we can't really trade on that that's not a good a, a zero correlation means it's just going to be randomly going up and down no real correlation for us to make money off of there's no alpha in that trade at this moment not saying in the future it won't be but i think uh right now you really can't look at gold and try to make a bitcoin trade on it it just simply isn't there you got to look at the numbers people don't go off of your feelings don't go off of emotions go off of what the data is showing us so they don't mention the elections here but i'm telling you every bubble needs something to prick it and i think the uncertainty from the elections is going to be that because of that i personally think the stock market is going to drop right after the elections and so will the cryptos so just giving you guys a heads up could definitely be wrong we could see the stock market depending on who gets in I do know that Biden, for some reason, the Wall Street guys are liking Biden. He's gotten an influx of Wall Street support, okay? It looks like Wall Street wants Biden in. Not sure why, but it looks like Wall Street wants them in. So if Biden loses, it could go either way. That's why I'm saying don't try to be uh, the know-it-all in this scenario. Maybe step back from the market and assess things after the election because of the correlation that we do have with S&P and Bitcoin. And this was a really interesting article. This is straight from the IMF, guys. A new Brenton Woods moment. Wow. So this is a article, again, I have to get credit where credit is due. Trek sent this out to me. I didn't even see this. This flew under the radar. And I wanted to definitely cover this with you guys today. The article talks about how today we face a new Brenton Woods moment, quote unquote, a pandemic that has already cost more than a million lives, an economic calamity that will make the world economy 4.4% smaller this year and strip an estimated 11 trillion of output by next year. It goes on to say we must take measures to prevent the buildup of financial risks over the medium term. And IMF is talking about they want to address some of the persistent problems like low productivity, slow growth, 
high inequalities and a looming climate crisis. And so what they want to do is make sure they keep a careful watch on risks presented by elevated public debt. All right, the fund is providing debt relief to its poorest members. This is what they always do, guys. They provide you loans or countries loans that ultimately they know they can't pay back. And then what do they do? They take the natural resources from that country. They say we should move towards greater debt transparency and enhance creditor coordination. They are encouraging the G20 discussions on a common framework for sovereign debt resolution, as well as a call for improving the architecture for sovereign debt resolutions, including private sector participation. And so that's the first initiative for them, which is to help actual countries. The second thing they wanna do is specifically help people. So they wanna expand internet access in sub-Saharan Africa by 10%. They wanna focus on climate change, blah, blah, blah. And then they say here that low interest rates with the right investments today can yield quadruple dividends tomorrow, avert future losses, spur economic gains, and save lives. And then go on and say that they've doubled the new arrangements to borrow and a new round of bilateral borrowing agreements preserves this financial firepower. So they've been essentially looks like allowing or easing the ability for sovereign nations to borrow money, the ones that have been impacted the most, and all this means to me, basically, just, I mean, you can read it for yourself. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but essentially what they're doing is printing more money and just playing a paper game. It's just shuffling the papers. That's all they're doing. No, the monetary system is not going to crash tomorrow, next year, or even in the year after. The fear porn that you see on YouTube and on, and sometimes on Twitter, I don't really see it on Twitter, but on YouTube primarily, that the end of the dollar is here and so on and so forth get that out of your head it's been 10 years it, it, i had to even get out of that i was stuck in that mind frame for at least eight years to the point where i finally realized wait a minute it's not going to end because they control the whole system yes the purchasing power of our dollars will continue to dwindle but you can cut a purchasing power of a currency into infinite pieces think about that it's lost 90 percent, 99 percent of its value today right but it can lose another 99 percent of its purchasing power in the next 20 or 30 years so it can continue to lose uh its purchasing power if everyone else is losing their purchasing power as well it's really like not going to end the monetary uh structure or system for the dollar but what will happen is that assets that are priced in dollars will continue to head higher so that means assets like bitcoin stock market uh even real estate uh it may have its ebb and flows but i think it ultimately it will continue to head higher so i don't see the dollar going away sorry guys i don't do the fear porn i think you're still going to see the dollar and what you're going to see is a shuffling of papers from the imf and all they're going to do is can kick and can kick and can kick how do you benefit from it the way you benefit is to be in these various asset classes that i just mentioned that will help protect you from the inflation that uh, we're going to see and continue to see. We already see it, but we're going to continue to see it and it's going to accelerate higher and higher. I don't think we're going to see hyperinflation with the dollar because the dollar is the world reserve currency. So real quickly, I just want to go over this watershed moment with FinCEN and this Bitcoin mixer operator. They were charged or fined $60 million, the operator of Helix and coin ninja all right facing already facing criminal money laundering charges which is going to put them away forever but they also refined 60 million dollars on top of that and they have levied its first ever financial penalty against a bitcoin mixer today's press release announcing the penalty points to the 2019 FinCEN clarification that virtual currency mixers must be registered with FinCEN and maintain an anti-money laundering compliance program. That pretty much defeats the purpose, right? You want to mix your coins to stay anonymous, not go to a place to mix your coins and they have your account on file and they know all your information. It's oil and water. It does not mix. And so for the last, I would say since 2017, a lot of people in crypto have been trying to be compliant with uh, traditional or old world 
regulations and, and, and organizations. And I, I'm just letting you know it just doesn't... At some point, there's going to have to be a line drawn in the sand. All right? And I don't know when that is and how that's going to look, but it's oil and water. It does not mix. It just simply does not mix. Even a lot of these DeFi programs and, and platforms we see out here, if they have a owner, right, that's a central point of failure. I'm not talking about the future DeFi's that we may have where it literally there's no one person that owns it. There's even the domain name is not registered to any one person. That's at that point is when you can say, okay, now we have a system where they literally can't go after and shut down that operation. But until then, you got a lot of tail risks that we need to be aware of. And again, this Bitcoin mixing uh, situation with FinCEN is a watershed moment. And it's a watershed moment. And you're going to see more mixers get hit with this. If crypto is truly going to threaten the old system, it's going to be a war. It's going to be a fight. It's going to get ugly. That's the only way it's going to work. So we can't think we're going to have some rosy hand, hand shaking, hand holding ceremony and, and coexist with the old system. Doesn't work. Let me know your thoughts about that, though. I'll try to link this uh, article as well from Coindesk if you guys want to check that out. But that's pretty much it for today, ladies and gents. Thanks for tuning in. And shout out again to CJK in the Discord room for the song Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick. And I've got a link in the description below for you guys to join us in the Red Pill Zone Discord room. Lots of fun. It's free. Come holler at us. And so if you found this video informative, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this. I'm out of here, people. Holla. <laughs>